looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd to get a 10 percent discount on orders over ten dollars and starting from now you also get entered into the gills of ravnica booster box giveaway which runs until october 5th hello and welcome to another episode of friendly friday a weekly series where we take a look at budget friendly standard or modern decks and this week we're taking a look at green white cat tribal in standard it's a mostly white deck just splashing green for pride sovereign which is definitely worth splashing for so we've got a lot of cat tribal synergies built in and a lot of life gain synergies as well. So let's dive right into it here, starting out with our one drops, where we have four copies of Leon in Vanguard, a new addition from M19, single white for a 1-1 cat soldier, and at the beginning of a combat on your turn, if you control three or more creatures, Vanguard gets plus one plus one until end of turn, and you gain one life. So it makes for a nice early attacker if you have enough creatures in play, and the life gain trigger is also very valuable, as we'll see in a second. Then we also have four copies of Sacred Cat, which is a 1-mana one 1-1 one one with lifelink, and also has Embalm for a single white, so we can exile it from the graveyard to make a 1-1 one one cat zombie token. And four copies of Adorned Pouncer, which is a 2-mana one 1-1 one one with double strike, and we can eternalize it from the graveyard for 5-mana and make a 4-4 four four zombie cat with double strike. Then we have four copies of a Jani Sprite Mate, two mana for a 2-2 two -two Cat Soldier that says whenever you gain life, you may put a plus one plus one counter on a Jani Sprite Mate. And there's a lot of ways in this deck to gain life between all the lifelink creatures and the Leon in Vanguard triggers. And with lifelink especially, if you attack with multiple creatures that have lifelink, each one of those creatures that will gain life will trigger the pride mate separately. So it's not like if you attack with two lifelink creatures, you only get one pride mate trigger, you will get two triggers, which will grow the pride mate very quickly. Then we also have three copies of a Radiant Destiny, a three mana enchantment with Ascent that says, as Radiant Destiny enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, which in our case is going to be Cat, and creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one, and as long as you have the City's Blessing, they also gain Vigilance, so as soon as we have ten or more permanents in play, we gain a City's Blessing for the rest of the game, and our cats will have Vigilance. Then we also have two copies of Thopter Rest, three mana for an enchantment that when it enters the battlefield we can exile an artifact or creature, so it acts as a nice removal spell. Then we get to Pride Sovereign, the reason we're playing green, we get a three mana 2-2 two -two cat that gets plus one plus one for each other cat we control, so it can get very large. And we can also pay one white mana, tap the Pride Sovereign and exert it, which means it won't untap during our next untap step. And then we get to make two lifelinking cat tokens, which synergize very nicely with multiple themes in the deck. Since we've got a bit of a go white theme, we've got a bit of a lifelink theme with cards like a Johnny Sprite Mate. So making those cat tokens is very valuable in our deck. And of course, it also grows the Pride Sovereign. Then we also have a singleton copy of a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants, four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. The plus one ability puts a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures, so also rewards us for going wide and having multiple creatures in play. The minus two ability can return a creature with converted mana cost two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, so we can get back something valuable like an Ajani's Pride Mate. And then the minus seven makes an emblem that says at the beginning of your end step, make three lifelinking cat tokens. Then we also have another powerful 4-drop from M19, Leonin Warleader, 4 mana for a 4-4 cat soldier, and whenever Leonin Warleader attacks, you can make two lifelinking cat tokens that are also tapped and attacking, so a card that can get out of hand very quickly, especially if it's backed up by some anthem effects. And speaking of anthem effects, we've got a single copy of Vanquisher's Banner, 5 mana for an artifact, when the banner enters the battlefield you have to choose a creature type, which is going to be cat, and creatures we control of the chosen type get plus one plus one, and then whenever we cast a creature spell of the chosen type, you also get to draw a card, so rewards us for playing more cats to the board, as we'll get to draw more cards. And then last but certainly not least, four copies of Regal Caracal, five mana for a 3-3 cat that when it enters the battlefield makes two lifelinking cat tokens. And other cats we control get plus one plus one and have lifelink, so if you combine that with a giant a Janice Pride Mate or a Pride Sovereign, giving those creatures lifelink is going to make it very difficult to lose any racing scenario. Then taking a look at our mana base, we've got one basic forest, ten basic planes since we're mostly a mono white deck, then four scatter groves which we can also cycle, Two Shafat Junes, which can also be used to give our creatures plus one plus one until end of turn. For some Petal Grove, which enters the battlefield untapped if we control a Plains or a Forest. And four copies of Unclaimed Territory, naming Cat, to help us cast our Pride Sovereign, but still be able to cast all our white one drops on turn one. Then quickly going over the sideboard, we've got two copies of Authority of the Consuls against the red decks with a lot of haste creatures. Two Blossoming Defense against removal heavy decks to protect our valuable creatures. Two Silent Gravestone against Graveyard decks and Scarab God decks. 
one heroic intervention against decks with sweepers like Fumigate, two Sorcerer Spyglass to shut down Planeswalkers and other things, one Forsake as a disenchant effect, Lifecrafter's Bestiary for the more grindy games, one Shalai which shines against Saddled Wreckage specifically and removal heavy decks, one Exxon's Binding as a versatile removal spell as well as a cast out, and then an Ajanian Yielding for the more grindy games to gain us a ton of card advantage and can also be used as a removal spell. So if that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And how about this one? Seems fine. Could use some more lands, but we're playing 25 because our curve is relatively high. And I think we'll lead with... I guess the Vanguard. Since we don't care too much about uh, life gain right away. And by going Pouncer into Sacred Cat, we'll attack for one more damage with the Vanguard. As opposed to the Sacred Cat here. Alright, up against what looks like a mono black deck with Memorial Pride Silver, not a bad pickup if we can find a land for it. So let's run out the Pouncer. Attack for one. And then next turn, even if we don't find a land, we can play Sacred Cat, which will make the Vanguard larger. Point on blue black, alright. And a search for Skanta, so. Interesting to see them play Memorial. Alright, no lands, that's unfortunate. But we will be attacking for 4 here. Still reasonable. Opponent mills a chart, of course, so they've probably got some brew going over there. Not your typical control deck, appears to be more a mid-range deck with Glinsleaf Siphoner here, which does not look very impressive in the face of all our cats. And now we have a choice, we can run out Pride Sovereign or we can run out a Radiant Destiny. My guess is running out Pride Sovereign is probably going to be better here, and we're okay trading whichever creature with the opponent here. So Leon and Vanguard triggers, attack with everyone. Opponent's gonna trade, takes 3 down to 12, and we get to follow up with a Pride Sovereign. They're likely to have an answer for Pride Sovereign, but if they don't, then they're in trouble. And it's gonna be a Gifted Aetherborn, that's fine. And we get to untap, picked up a Shafat Junes. Alright, so now we have a ton of options all of a sudden. We can play War Leader, we can play a Jani, we can play Radiant Destiny plus Exert Pride Sovereign. So my guess is just going wide is going to be better in the face of Aetherborn, which means this turn we could play Radiant Destiny, Exert Pride Sovereign, and then next turn we can use a Jani to make some of those 2-2 two -two cats into 3-3s three so they can attack past Aetherborn. So let's play Radiant Destiny. We're also going to get to the City's Blessing pretty quickly here. And I guess there's no real reason not to exert right away with the Pride Sovereign. Let's see, 3, 7, 8. We would get to the City's Blessing if we exert right now. So that might be worth it. Yeah, let's just exert right now. Could have still attacked with the Pouncer to trade for the Aetherborn. And our opponent's going to fail push now, so I guess that wouldn't have worked out. But they did let us gain the City's Blessing here by... Waiting on the Fatal Push, which I guess is good for us. But yeah, the plan was to put a plus one plus one counter on the Pouncer so it could attack past the Aetherborn without trading. Looks like our opponent has another Aetherborn, that's fine. Alright, Pride Mate is a nice draw too, but I think we're just casting a Jani here. Also plays around Essence Scatter, which they could have. And then we'll just put some counters on our token and I guess we might as well put it on the sacred cat since we would rather trade the sacred cat than a token since we can still make use of sacred cat in the graveyard and attack with all three threes here and since they have vigilance they can still play defense as well so it's kind of putting the opponent in a difficult spot opponent's down to six we'll say go our opponent needs something like a scarab god ooh green mana their opponent's Splashing green for something? Could it be something like Muldrotha? Who knows? Aetherborns are staying back. Not attacking, not blocking. And a Pride Mate, the pickup, 
So now we could play double pride mate, they'll get very large after we attack with our tokens. But I think we would rather just play one pride mate and then still be able to exert pride sovereign. So our plan will be to put a counter on the cat token and sacred cat. Then we'll play the pride mate. And we can even still embalm the sacred cat if they trade for it. And then we'll attack with all our tokens and the sacred cats. Opponent's forced to block at least one. Pride mate's gonna grow. And then end of turn we can still exert Pride Sovereign after we embalm the Sacred Cat here. And Johnny is also working his way up to ultimate range. So we're in a pretty decent spot here depending on what the opponent does. It's gonna be 4 mana for Contempt on a Johnny, but they give us the opportunity to activate him first, so... It's fine by me. They were maybe hoping to get something else. Is this Muldrotha? It is. Alright. And I get to replay a land. And replay a creature from the graveyard. So I guess their opponent's not dead yet here. Let's see. They can gain 4. They've got 3 blockers. They might still be in trouble here, especially if we draw a land for Shafantune's activation. Alright, so... Let's see. Block, block, block. Take 6. Gain 4, so yeah, they wouldn't be dead yet, I guess. So if we had drawn a land for Shafat Dunes, they would have died. So now the question is, do we even bother attacking, since then our opponent can just make some good blocks and then replay Aetherborns from the graveyard? Might just be better to play some more creatures and then go wide and kill them in one big attack. It's probably fine. Do give them a turn of Ascanta activations. Currently the only creature they can get back from the graveyard with Muldrotha is a Siphoner, which doesn't do a ton. So we can probably just play War Leader, say go, and then next turn try and go for it. And playing War Leader probably better than going Pride Mate plus Vanguard. Although against a single spot removal spell, playing Pride Mate plus Vanguard would be better, I guess. Alright, I changed my mind. We'll go Vanguard plus Pride Mate, play around that spot removal spell. And we want to play Vanguard pre-combat here, so we still get the trigger and put counters on the Pride Mates. Make those larger. And then we'll try next turn. We'll also have an untapped Pride Sovereign, which can potentially attack or still exert. Opponent's gonna attack for two with Aetherborn, hoping to trade. But we'll just take it. Chart, of course. Alright, also reason to attack there. Plays a land, two cards in hand. That's untap. Another Pride Sovereign to draw. So let's say, worst case scenario, they have Fatal Push plus Vraska's Contempt or Gear Hulk into Vraska's Contempt. They would essentially get rid of our two largest creatures, being Pride Mate and Pride Sovereign. They could block our two other largest creatures, and then they would still take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, after gaining 4, so they would still be dead. So I think I feel comfortable attacking with everyone here. And is there a reason to play anything pre-combat? I don't think so. So yeah, let's just send everyone. So this seems okay. Alright, they did have the Torrential Gearhulk. I guess if they have Gearhulk into Contempt plus Fatal Push, we might not get there. And we can still even exert a Pride Sovereign here, which is nice about the combo with Radiant Destiny. So yeah, we've got plenty of leftovers. And our opponent's still taking lethal. Alright, so we got there against Sultai Muldrotha. Let's uh, take a look at our sideboard. So Silent Gravestone could be useful as it can shut down Gearhulk and uh, if they have a Scarab God it also shuts that down. Plus we can always cycle it, although it is pretty pricey to cycle it. So I think we want probably at least one Silent Gravestone, don't know if we want a second one before seeing Scarab God. Uh, Ajani seems good, as it's both removal and card advantage. Cast out and Ixal's Binding seem good against those finishers, potentially. Don't think we want Spyglass before we see Scarab God. Although I assume he's in there. And I don't think we need anything else. Blossoming Defense could be useful. But I also don't want to overboard. So these are the potential cards I'm looking at. Best Sherry might also be fine, but again... Don't know how deep we have to go. Alright, so these are the cards I'm looking at to potentially bring in, but I don't expect to bring all of them in since 
there's a few too many of them. What cards don't we like in a matchup? I guess the War Leader is pretty weak to Contempt, but if it gets to untap, then it's quite powerful. But I could see shaving two War Leaders here. Then the Sacred Cats are probably cuttable, so we'll cut two of those. Let's just sprinkle some of our sideboard cards in here. Blossoming Defense, a Jani, one Gravestone, and one Ixalan's Binding. Sure, some of these cards might be useful, but it's not like our main deck cards are really bad. Alright, the sand seems fine. Decent curve of creatures. Opponent's got to turn to Aetherborn again. It's gonna put a halt to our Sacred Cat beatdown. That's fine. Next turn we'll play Pride Sovereign, see if they have an answer to it. Alright, no turn 3 play from our opponent, so let's attack for 1, see what happens. Alright, and now we'll play Pride Sovereign and hope it resolves. Opponent's gonna fail push the Sacred Cat there. It's a pretty aggressive use of fail push, but I'm not going to complain. Take two from Aetherborn. And Moment of Craving. Alright, now the Fatal Push makes more sense. Alright, odds on top. And try to play another Pride Sovereign. And we could also play the Vanguard here, play around another Moment of Craving on the Pride Sovereign. I guess that makes sense, although by going Pride Sovereign into Vanguard we might give up the opportunity to Regal Caracal. But I guess next turn we want to exert a Pride Sovereign anyway, and we'll play Radiant Destiny, so that's fine. Alright, so we'll go Vanguard into Sovereign. And hope to be able to untap with it. I'll take two from Aetherborn, not too concerned with losing a bit of life here, since our deck has so much life gain built in. And it's going to be a Thrashing Brontodon that can answer the Radiant Destiny and potential other enchantments. But we got to untap with Pride Sovereign, which is what we wanted. Let's play out Scatter Groves, play Radiant Destiny. And now we can kind of sit back on the Pride Sovereign. We'll name Cat. And now we have an interesting decision. We can exert Pride Sovereign to gain one with the Vanguard. Or we can threaten to use the Pride Sovereign as a blocker for the Brontodon, which seems more relevant. So I think we'll say go with Pride Sovereign activation up. Aetherborn and Brontodon are attacking. Feels like they're gonna sack the Brontodon on the Radiant Destiny anyways, and are just kind of checking out if uh, we're willing to make a move. Could be that they have another moment of craving they want to use on the Pride Sovereign after we block. But Pride Sovereign would become a 6-6, so I think I'm fine blocking the uh, Brontodon here. And then we'll exert before damage. And if they let the exertion resolve here, then we'll also get the City's Blessing for any future Radiant Destinies if they decide to destroy this one. So they should probably just kill the response if that's their plan, and they do. Alright, that's fine. So we'll take two from the Aetherborn, got some cat tokens in play. And our opponent's hitting their land drops. And saying go. Alright, time to run out a Regal Caracal, I suppose. And attack for a bunch. And they might have to use uh, Vraska's Contempt on the Caracal. And then we can still embalm a Sacred Cat. And it's going to be a Moment of Craving on the Vanguard instead. Alright, that's promising since now probably means they don't have an answer for the Caracal. Get in for four. And I think we're fine embalming here. And I think we want to embalm Sacred Cat instead of playing out to one in hand, since if we draw Vanquisher's Banner, the Sacred Cat in hand will still net us an extra card. Aetherborn staying back this time. And a Dune's a draw. So we could be very aggressive and activate Shafat Dunes, try and make an attack, but if they then kill the Caracal, they get a free block with Aetherborn on a token. So that doesn't seem great, so I think we're fine chilling for now. 
just building up a wide board and eventually attack with everyone. And I guess we don't show them the Shafat dunes yet. Opponent with Detection Tower, alright. It's for those annoying Carnage Tyrants, I suppose. Fine Mares, perhaps. Let's exert. Opponent's being patient, or they just don't have anything. So we could be patient as well, we could go for it. We would be attacking for quite a bit here. And even in the worst case scenario where they kill Caracal and eat a cat token for free, doesn't seem all that bad. So yeah, I think we go for it. This is a spot where Blossoming Defense would be awesome at protecting our Caracal. Send everyone except Caracal. And let's see if the opponent has anything. Opponent blocks a cat token. And does damage happen? It does, alright, awesome. Opponent's down to 8, we got rid of the Aetherborn. And we'll say go. And what is this? A Girol kind of turn. They're gonna fatal push the Pride Sovereigns, my guess. Alright, so they got to enable Revolt. But they are down to 8. So we might still be able to just attack with everyone next turn for lethal. It's gonna be 5 mana for Liliana Death's Majesty. Good minus on Aetherborn, gives them the best chance of surviving. And just a planes to draw. So what happens if we attack with everyone and our opponent, let's say, doesn't have anything? Then they can block, block, take 12, and they would gain 2. So they go up to 10, and they still die. Yeah, I think we go for it. Would be bad if they have interaction and stay alive, because then we lose the Caracal, but our opponent's still going to be pretty low here. Try and close out the game before the opponent gets too far ahead with Liliana. So everyone at our opponents, and we'll find out if uh, we won the game or if we're going to be in a bit of trouble. Alright, Pun makes the obvious blocks. And looks like they have something. Oh no. Fatal push a token. But we still have Exaxis here. Had to be a moment of craving there to survive. Alright, awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand seems fine. The scatter grows a little awkward since we would like to go one drop, double one drop. And a thriving turtle, wow. Opponent could be pulling some sort of energy combo based deck, I've seen that before. We're just gonna go territory, naming cats and run out vanguard. And then ideally we would draw an untapped lands next turn, so we can go sacred cat into vanguard. Or I guess just play the pride mate would be fine too. Opponent with double island attacks with the turtle. Alright, not gonna block here, so I guess they're not really planning to use energy for anything special. Is this just a mono blue aggro deck? Well, it looks like it. Slitterblade. Well, against mono blue aggro, I like our chances. Since we've got a ton of life gain built in. So now we could go Vanguard into Sacred Cats, gain a life. Or we could just run out Pride Mate. And then next turn we can play another Vanguard, play Sacred Cat, trigger Pride Mate, and attack for a bunch. That seems slightly better to me. Don't even have to pay the life here. And if we can hit our land drops for Radiant Destiny and Regal Caracal eventually, we'll be in great shape. What we don't want to see is something like a Curious Obsession drawing the opponent a ton of cards. So just a Slitter Blades getting in for two. And we get to untap, even found a planes. Uh, so we could play Radiant Destiny if we wanted to, but I think we're more interested in playing out some uh, cats here to trigger the vanguard and the pride mates. So we'll lead with the sacred cats. Then we'll run out the vanguard. May or may not get countered, who knows. Alright, wizard's retort, fair enough. Vanguard triggers, grows the pride mates. And attack with both. Opponent can block Pride Mate, take two. And next turn we'll have the Radiant Destiny to help us out. So Wizards Retort indicates that they probably have some wizards in there. I guess they're playing Siren Storm Tamer, which I think is a pirate wizard. And their opponent with a quadruple slitter blade here. And is now empty handed. Ooh, and a war leader too. Let's say Pride Mate becomes a 4-4. Our opponent can just block with everyone. Didn't think we want that. I think we just play Warleader. 
and gain the life from Vanguard and then say go and at next turn we can play Destiny attack with everyone and don't risk losing anything. So yeah, this game is going to go pretty well for us next turn and our opponent scoops it up. Alright, against some mono blue, all in unblockable aggro, how do we sideboard? Our deck is set up pretty well against it already. Just want to be as low to the ground as possible. And I guess counter spells, we don't really have anything in particular. I didn't include Serpo Part because double green's too difficult on the mana. Otherwise, that would be a fine card to board in for this matchup. Could consider cutting a Jani since he's going to get pressured by all those unblockable creatures. But I don't immediately see anything we would want instead. So I think we just run it back. This seems like a matchup where our opponent needs an early Curious Obsession backed up by a ton of counter spells to throw us off balance. This hand's fine, a bit on the pricey side here. Don't have a lot of cheap creatures to go with the Vanguard, but uh, our late game looks pretty powerful. And there's the Sarah Storm Tamer, Pirate Wizard indeed. And double Thopterest could go a long way as well. We are missing a two mana play at the moment, so we could be a little bit behind on board if our opponent has a good turn too. Another turtle. And that's it. Well, that's a good draw. Run out to Pride Mates. No real reason to attack here. And then next turn we can run out the uh, Thopter Rest. But uh, finding a cheap cat we can play next turn would be ideal, since that would trigger the Vanguard and put a counter on the Pride Mate. Both are getting in there. So I think we're fine blocking the turtle here. Not our Storm Tamer. Alright, opponent's going all in here. I kind of like Scatter Groves into War Leader more than playing a Thopter Rest here, since Thopter Rest doesn't really do much. So I'll attack for two. Could even trade for the Vanguard, honestly. Yeah, that seems fine. Opponent might take the trade. I would be okay with it. If they do. The main reason I'm okay with the trade here is just because our late game looks pretty powerful, so I'm not too concerned with losing a uh, a little bit of value here, even though the Vanguard might be better than Storm Tamer. And now for opponent does go, Curious Obsession on the Storm Tamer, we can stop to arrest it cleanly, since they can't protect it with a second Storm Tamer. So get hit for two. Down to 16. And nothing from the opponent yet. They might have a Wizard's Retort up here, double blue with a Wizard in play. Would make sense. So we probably don't run out a War Leader after all. Instead, we can just run out the Dorn Pouncer here. And I think that's probably better than playing a Thopter Rest. Although by playing Thopter Rest we get rid of the Wizard and then they can't sit on the Wizard's Retort anymore. It's also more mana efficient. Alright, fine, we'll Thopter Rest. And it's gonna be a Spell Pierce instead. So they might still have the Retort in hand. Bone gets him for two. But now if we draw land we could go a Thopter Rest plus a Dorn Pouncer, or just run out the banner. And we did draw the land. Could go multiple ways here, but I feel like it's pretty obvious they have a Retort in hand, and a play that plays best around it is just going Thopter Rest into Pouncer, or Pouncer into Thopter Rest. Depends whether or not we want the Pouncer to get countered, which I guess we're fine with. Although I guess going Thopter Rest into Pouncer plays around Spell Pierce better. And they just showed us a copy. Opponent lets it go. They could have a Merfolk Trickster here pretty easily. So do we want to attack Pride Mate into potential Trickster? I guess that's fine. Since we're not gaining life anytime soon here. Alright, they're just gonna run it out themselves. Tapping down the Pride Mate. So they're not giving us a choice. Alright, so now they've got a Wizard in play again for the Retort. But it's not like we're behind on board. We've got one additional point of power to attack with. And in fact our opponent stays back with the Trickster. And is still stuck on two lands. A Regal Caracal quite a draw. Alright, so I think here we just attack with both. Then we probably have to give them something to counter. Which is probably just going to be the banner, which is kind of awkward. Casting its second main. Alright, opponent takes it. Could also do nothing. But if they play another Trickster, that would be unfortunate. Yeah, I think we cast the second main phase banner here. 
So the reason I second main phase this is, let's say our opponent uh, did trade Trickster for one of our creatures, then we would make sure that Wizards Retort can't counter this, but then we probably would have just played uh, the Regal Caracal or, or the War Leader. Alright, and they're gonna use the Retort on it anyway. So had we cast it main phase, then they would have used it anyway, so it's kind of a tricky spot. So they probably have another copy in hand, is my guess. But they're still behind on board, technically speaking, so they can just sit on their counter spells forever. And they're gonna run out of Slither Blade and a Storm Tamer. Alright, so this is our window to get our Regal Caracal down, I think. And that's gonna grow the Pride Mate quite a bit. And of course, a double strike lifelink on the Dorn Pouncer will make it so that uh, a Jani's Pride Mate will be a 4 4 by the time it deals damage itself. And then we'll gain life twice more. So by the end of this, the Pride Mate's going to be a 6 6. Opponent throws a Chum Block in front of our Pride Mate. Opponent's at 8, facing down an entire army of cats and scoops it up. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand's not amazing, bit slow, no early plays, but uh, it's pretty hard to mulligan this hand. So I'll keep, do have some interaction with Hopter Rests, and we do have a lot of cheap plays we can draw into for turn two. Up against another green-white deck, that's exciting. Hopefully it's not a Turbo Fog deck, since that's probably not a great matchup. I'll run out. Territory, naming cat, and then cycle scatter groves end of turn. Make sure we don't flood out, but we could regret it if we don't run any more lands in the foreseeable future. Alright, some petal groves into Lanor Elves. So it's a creature deck. Double Lanor Elves, even. That's scary. So now is that they play two Lanor Elves. Using Thopterest on one of them is not super important anymore. We'd rather just deal with whatever large creature they play out. And Jade Light Ranger, that's fine. Reveals Scatter Groves and another Ranger, which they keep on top. Alright, so now we can run out uh, Radiant Destiny and attack with our Adorn Pouncer. And then double recall caracal is going to be pretty powerful in a creature matchup. And because we have double regal caracal incoming, I'm okay trying to race here since we'll gain a ton of life. So there's the other ranger. Reveals a vine mare and botanical sanctum. Alright, so opponent's on blue as well. Probably for sideboarded counter spells. We're just going to jam regal caracal. And hope to ride it to victory here. Even get the city's blessing, so Pouncer now is Vigilance. So it's going to be difficult for the point out races unless they can land something giant like a Galta. I guess the blue could also be for Hadana's Climb, which can deal a lot of damage out of nowhere. But uh, regardless, I like our position here. Our hand's pretty good too. Opponent could activate Thorn Lieutenant's ability, give it plus four, plus four. It's gonna be another Thorn Lieutenant. In two, Verger's Gearhulk, alright. Opponent going big. So the Gearhulk will make it difficult for us to attack, depending on where they put the plus one, plus one counters. But we do have a Thopter Rest, so if they go too much onto one creature, we get to punish them. They spread them out on the Thorn Lieutenants instead. So what happens if we play another Regal Caracal? We're probably fine attacking with the Adorn Pouncer. Could also go War Leader plus Vanguard here. That might actually be better since Pouncer trades for a Thorn Lieutenant no matter what. If it's a 3-3 or a 4-4, don't think that makes a huge difference. So I think we'll play the Vanguard to gain that one life. And then just attack with the Pouncer. Since I'm fine trading it with whatever, really. And then we'll play the War Leader. Alright, just a chum block. Works for me. So we only gain 3 life there since the creature died with first rank damage. 
so we never got to deal the regular damage to gain the life. Run out War Leader, and then next turn Caracal can pump up War Leader once again. Boy's got three cards left in hand though, if they have another Virtuous Gearhulk, that's gonna be good for them. Instead it's a Benefaction of Ronas, so that also strongly indicates Hadana's climb. Reveal some goodies, cast out a good removal spell here. So they go cast out plus ranger. And they can always cast uh, cast out here at instant speed with the two Lanor Elves. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Alright, Pride Sovereign also a decent pickup here. So we've got a lot of options. My guess is playing the Pride Sovereign is probably better since we're fine playing a somewhat longer game here. So we'll just attack first. See if they let us attack with the War Leader or if they want to use a cast out. Alright, they are letting us attack with the War Leader. So do we want to attack with it is a question. I guess we do. Cast out the Regal Caracal and then Pouncer is only a 2-2. But we kind of want them to exile the Caracal here since then the Pride Sovereign is going to take over. Alright, those blocks are fine. We'll put the Thorn Lieutenant first, I think. Even though I guess a Blossoming Defense could be somewhat annoying. But this still seems okay. And are they gonna go for the cast out on Caracal? Seems likely. Nope, they're gonna go for the one on Radiant Destiny instead. I guess that makes sense too. Alright, still trade for the Thorn Lieutenant. And, uh... Bouncer sure dies, but we can always get it back later. And now we'll play Pride Sovereign, which can also go wide. So a land next turn would not be a bad draw, since then we can exert plus play another Caracal. Another Jade Light Ranger we knew about. Reveals on Sarah's Wings, which they decide to keep on top, so that's their kind of mirror breaker, if you will. But we do still have the Thopter Rest in hand. Is this the Hadana's Climb? It is. Alright, so Hadana's Climb with On Sarah's Wings next turn could definitely deal some damage. But we've got enough life to work with here that we shouldn't die on the spot. And then hopefully Thopter Rest can be a good answer. Opponent's also empty-handed now. Next turn we know they're drawing On Sarah's Wings, which they're likely to use. They don't want to transform the Hadana's Climb yet. And Shafat Dune's a draw, so now we get to... Exert Pride Sovereign and play Regal Caracal. Seems good. Uh, don't think we're attacking with everyone yet since their opponent has two good blockers. Although we could consider it. Since their opponent's only at eight. Might force some chum blocks. I think we'll attack with everyone next turn. That seems better to me. So we'll just play a Caracal. And pass a turn. Since we know what they're drawing, Sun Attack next turn after making two more tokens seems worthwhile. Hopefully they do run out the On Sarah's Wings here, but it seems pretty likely. Yep, on the Thorn Lieutenant. And now they could flip the Hadana's Climb and attack us for quite a bit of lifelink in the air. But we're fine with it, given the Thopter Rest in hand. Alright, they're not using the... Wing Temple on offense, so they're saving it for defense. And let's arrest the Thorn Lieutenant. We're one mana short of also using our Shafat Dunes here. But I think attacking with everyone now is probably worth it. And that's going to wrap things up against the banned Hadana's Climb. Unfortunately, don't have time for the entire match here, but I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.